Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of All The Mods 7. How are you guys doing today? How's life? I have been thinking. Yes, that is something that I do, from time to time. The antimatter that we are producing here is radioactive, and I live here. I don't want to be mutated. And you know, the room that we have for our antimatter setup is not very safe, because first off, it doesn't have a door, no shielding, and it has access to the sky. I don't think the quantum armor is going to protect us, so what we're going to do is that we're going to fix it. Hot wire. Really dangerous. Defense system? Yes. Radioactive. I think our first step is to have a blast door. Very good, very good. It seems to be functioning and nothing is wrong. Except for a fact that you should not be on minus 64, you should be on plus 64. Yes. Much better. Unlike the previous system where we're using a keypad and you can see the password on the JEI, although it's incredibly secure, we're going to use a much more secure method. And that is, we're going to use a card reader. And obviously it's purple. It opens and it should close. Perfect. I didn't really think this through. We need two cards if we want to use the card to exit as well. Because, you know, it has to be linked. Therefore, we're going to use a keypad with a very secure password for exiting. So just to summarize, we can use the card to get in. Nice, nice. And we can use the passcode to get out. Now that the base itself is secure, we're going to observe the effects of radiation on living creatures. Yes, you see, at the other side of this door, the radiation is negligible. So we're good. But I'm guessing the effects on the other side should be crazy. Let's go and check it. Oh my goodness. Mutations. Very dangerous ones. Yes, yes, I know, you don't have to say it. I do understand that making this room fully secure is going to be a daunting task. But fear not, as long as I'm here, I'm going to try and do my best. Very good, it does look relatively safe, and lead should give us radiation protection. According to our instruments, we did manage to contain the radiation within this room. And just to make sure that nobody is going to touch it, we also have some lasers. They do quite a bit of damage. However, now that we're sure that our antimatter is safe, we need to make sure that whenever we enter this room, we're going to be equipped with a hazmat suit. If you guys remember, we used to have a series on a server where I made myself an armor swapping room. We're going to use the same concept in order to get a hazmat suit. And how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use modular routers and there is a player module. You can configure it so that it will take out something from your main inventory or the inventory without a hotbar the armor slots, off hands, and their inventory. Hazmat suit is an armor, so we need to take it from the armor slots. Oh, I forgot we have holes. Oh my goodness, where did it drop? Ah, it's fine, we can demonstrate it using a chest, we don't need to have a hopper. So essentially, this guy is configured in a way that it will take off my armor and put it inside the chest, if I give it a redstone signal. You see? It's taking it away. That is a teeny tiny bit stupid, I know, but don't you worry, it's going to get much more stupid. We can take our armor off, or we can put it on. So if we reverse you, I should be wearing armor. And basically that's the concept. How am I going to do that? I don't really know. I'm going to figure it out. Okay, so I think we have a working system. Imagine I will enter this room. This system is going to be automatic, but for demonstration purposes, we have levers. I am wearing my routine armor, which is the quantum armor. When I press a button, two routers are going to be activated. One of them is this one, and one of them is this one. So if we activate this guy, it's going to take off my quantum armor. And when this guy gets activated, I can wear a hazmat suit. Whenever I'm done, these two routers are going to be activated. It will take off my hazmat suit and it will give me my quantum armor. That is called success. And something which is totally unnecessary. The way that it works is relatively simple, but I run into a few problems. First off, all of the routers are on redstone mode high, meaning that whenever they receive a redstone signal, they're going to be activated. Secondly, each and every one of them has a player module. The one which is going to extract the armor is not very important, but I do have a filter for it, so that the armors don't really get mixed up. But the one which is supposed to equip you the armor does require a filter. Without it, it's never gonna work. Just as an example, if I remove the quantum leggings and put it inside the router, you might notice that, well, I'm still missing my leggings. However, if we put a filter for it and it's on whitelist and put it back inside the chest, I'm still wearing my leggings. That's good. Well, that is essentially how it works. It's nothing super complicated. I think maybe with a redstone lash, we can make it a teeny tiny bit simpler. Because here's the thing, the one which is going to give me the quantum armor can be active at all times, the one which is going to remove the hazmat suit can also be active at all times. Whenever I press a button, these guys should be deactivated, and then these guys should be active. My personal struggle with redstone is very simple. I know what I want, I just don't know what you call it. So this is a powered toggle latch, right? We can turn it on, and I'm assuming whenever we give it a pulse, it should turn off. Right. 
That is great. Whenever we give it a pulse, it will change its state. That is good because we want it to be on. We are going to connect it to these two routers, like so. That will make sure that I'm wearing my quantum armor and the hazmat suit is off. Now, if we have one more repeater over here with one block, one redstone torch so that we can invert it, we should be able to connect it to the other two routers and, well, I think we're done. And if we are done, let us give it a test. So if I press the button, yes, yes, the quantum armor is gone and the hazmat suit is on. Perfect. And you know, we can just press the button again and everything will be reversed. Also, instead of that button, maybe we can hook it up to the door itself. So you're going to be on receive mode. And if I remember correctly, your frequency was antimatter. So let us enter the room one more time and see if it works. Uh, where is my card? Here. Will it work? Yes, immediately. That is perfect. And the fun part is whenever I want to go out, it should also work. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, perfection at its finest. And again, totally useless. I have went up ahead, cleaned up the room, added some nuclear waste. Well, it's not nuclear, but you know, we have to pretend. All in all, I think it looks nice. Uh, we're done. We can go to another project. I am wearing my armor, right? Yes, yes. Now that we have completed doing some stupid stuff, let us move on to a few practical stuff. One of our goals in this mod pack is to make the older mod star, so we need to start getting all of these components. And if you look at each and every one of them, you might notice that there's always a random block of insanium somewhere. We have a ridiculous farm for crops, which is also decent at making us inferior. The problem is, you get more seeds than the essence itself. When I made this farm, I thought I'm going to need different crops in order to make different types of food and have a kitchen. The problem is that after we made the villager tower with Mahutsukai, well, I don't have to eat anymore. So we might as well convert it into an inferior essence farm. And you know, mystical agriculture in general. In case we need crops later on for food, well, we're just gonna use garden cloches. Okay, so I have done some filtering at the farm and I'm rearranging it. This happened again. And I thought since it's better to get insanium blocks in our applied energistic system, it's time to make an infusion crystal. This one, the one which doesn't break. And it doesn't really seem to be that expensive. We have 5000 inferium, that should be more than enough. We have 15 supremium essence, this is one gemstone, and the master infusion crystal. As usual, I do have a crafter from RF Tools and we're just going to set up some patterns. The first one is prudentium, and we want it to be internal and then we work our way down the line until we reach insanium and for the final recipe we're just going to have a recipe for an insanium block there you go also i did mention that we are getting a ton of seeds so i do have a seed reprocessor well it's going to process the seeds and it's going to put the inferium inside here the farm is not going to be the fastest thing in the world because i have a feeling that these guys have to grow and I literally replanted every single one of them, so it's gonna take some time. The farm is operational and it's producing us inferium at a very slow rate. If it's too slow, I can always supplement it with a few garden cloches, so that's not a big deal. Therefore, we should be able to move on. A few episodes ago, I did mention that I want to make an ore processing system and everybody was telling me, Lush, you should use integrated dynamics. And I do recall that during two episodes, I also mentioned that I'm going to use integrated dynamics until I started making it. And during the episode which I set it up, everybody was like, ha ha ha, Lush, you're an idiot. They're going to remove it in the next update. I am so sorry, my dearest friends, but the joke's on you. Because the easiest way to counter any update which breaks your game is just not to update. The update came out for me yesterday or the day before yesterday, but uh, well, I'm not going to update until I get half a million uranium ingots. And this is why we have a digital miner. We get like 20 ingots per ore, so this should be easy peasy. And at this very moment, we have 77, 78,000. Every time that I'm moving it, I'm getting like 500 ores. You do the math. And this is the speed that we're getting uranium ingots. Maybe I should go to a million. Joking aside, I have no idea why they decided to remove integrated dynamics or processing from the pack because if you want to get the older mod star, ores are not a problem. Granted, uranium is going to cause you a teeny tiny bit of a problem if you want to get polonium, but still. You don't need that much of it, because the most difficult part of making the older mod star is to make the dimensional seed. Because here is the part where you need compressed blocks. We need blackstone, that's a ton of blackstone. We need endstone, netherrack, soul sand, emerald, clay, red sand, and obsidian. So this is going to be somewhere around 50 million blackstone, and this is almost half a million emerald. And I think if our goal is to get the older mod star, maybe we should also work on those. But this part was empty. I guess for the moment we should start with emeralds and what we're going to do is that we're going to have some loot fabricators.
something weird happened. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, you might notice that we have 15 more loot fabricators and simulation chambers. Currently, only 4 of them are working and are generating us emeralds because, well, I only had 4 Vindicator data models. We are going to need a few other mobs as well, for example spiders in order to get string, blazes, enderman, and maybe a phantom. So I think all in all, 10 of them are going to be for Vindicators, making us emeralds, and I don't know, the rest for the other mobs. And I would like to mention it is not the fastest thing in the world, but we also have a creeper farm which is contributing a significant amount. Oh, and by the way, I did finish this corridor and I also worked a teeny tiny bit on our Certus Quartz area. And I just remembered I forgot to fix the roof. And there you go, this should be fine. Yes. In other news, I also decided that we need to fix our farm. Because judging by the amount of lag that the sylphs were producing, I was like, what the hell, we just make an actual farm. And besides, if we want to use the sylphs, we're missing on a bunch of good stuff. For example, you might notice that we're using green fertilizer. It is from farming from blockheads and it will increase the crop output. We also have reliquary, so we can have a lily pad of fertility. I'm out of resources, this is why we only have one. And I have also been checking, there is a tablet of overgrowth from Arsnevu, which is something that we are going to use as well. And let us not forget, we have roots, we have botania, there are a few ways that we can increase the crop growth. The problem is that we don't really have a good harvester in this mod pack, except the one from Create, which can do a huge area. And well, I ran into a small problem. This harvester that you see over here is 21 wide and well, 21 long. And if I give a pulse to the sequence gear shift, we're stuck. I think there is an issue with how long this thing can be and well, if we cut it in half, we should be fine, right? Yes. Do you go to the end? Almost. So I think that's what we're going to do. We need to dig a new hole for the piston shaft and I think that should be a decent hole. So let me do some rearrangements and I'll be right back. Uh, this is just for testing purposes, I want to see if it actually works. I want them to work in sync and I think we can get away with that by having a gearbox over here. The sequence gear shift is set to piston, it will extend it by 21 blocks, it will wait for 10 ticks and then it will retract it by 21 blocks. And I just have to do this for you as well. And we should make sure that, yeah, not when stopped, place only at starting position. Uh, so if we give you a link, I don't know, we give you a frequency. And if I give you a redstone signal, will you work the way I want you to? No. Do you know why? I think this one should be the opposite way. Let us try one more time. Yes. Now it works. No? I have no idea why this one stops. Okay, the reason it was not working was the lily pad of fertility. I removed it and now it's fine. You see? We're good. It's just that this is kind of a bummer. Can we place it one block lower? Will it be effective? Probably not. Oh yeah, it does work. And you work as well. Okay, I will figure out something for symmetry purposes. Okay, so it has been a while later. I did rearrange our farm. I did move the lily pad of fertility down here. And I did manage to gather a few material for some rituals from Arsnevu. But I have some bad news. It seems that the green fertilizer that I'm using for the farmland doesn't really have any effect on the mystical agriculture crops. So normally it should give me one. And it gives me one. Yeah, you see, each and every one of them is just giving me one. That is true. <laughs> okay, if that is the case, we are not going to go with green fertilizer. We will go with red. Because, you know, this one is going to speed things up. And besides, this is much cheaper. We just need red dye. The other one needed cactus. I can do this, right? Yes. We just need a few pieces of red dye. And just out of curiosity, who is going to give us the most yield? Well, there are things that are going to give us a better yield. But enrichment chamber is something that we have available. Oh, that's a bit. Okay. You know, maybe I should have just gone with farmer's delight. That looks nicer. Actually, red fertilizer is great. Those have already grown. Uh, if you don't use the mystical agriculture farmlands, it's gonna take ages. Uh, this is great. So now we also want to try something. This is a ritual brazier from Ars Nevu. And here is a tablet of overgrowth. You go on top. It does require source in order to function. So here is a source jar. And let us activate it and see if it works. Oh, that is cool. Why isn't it purple? I wish it was purple. But the range is garbage. Yeah, it's just five blocks. This is why I made a few extra ones, because I wasn't exactly sure how we should place them. So if we put you up here, give you a jar, and give you one more tablet, how will it work? Oh, it has to be on the same level. Okay. That's a shame. Because, you know, I think Agricarnation from Botania does not have to be on the same level. Same with the lily pad of fertility. Although, this is not working because the crops are out of range. 
Okay, I think for the moment, here's what we're going to do. We are going to have two more ritual pedestals on the central row, which is not going to be harvested. And I think here is a decent spot. Oh, it fills it in. It's in range. <laughs> okay, this is a depositor relay and I was not expecting it to be in range. If that is the case, I don't really need more relays. So you, my dear friend, you also get a tablet and activate. Here is one more jar and it is filling in. That is good. And one more brazier. I would like to mention that this consumes a stupid amount of source. And I think the only reason that we are able to handle it is that our source generator is amazing. Yep. We're keeping up. Slimes are the best. Uh, for killing, not in general. Okay, we have reached a point where I'm relatively happy. I just wanted to mention two very small points. You might notice the range on the rituals is only five blocks. So if I come here, these crops are not getting anything. Well, just to correct myself, it's not that they're getting nothing. They do have the red fertilizer, which is better than nothing. But other than that, they're getting nothing. So as a substitute, I should be able to hide some lily pads of fertility over here and, well, build a wall over it so that we don't have to see it. And yes, I did mention that I'm redoing the farm because of lag and somehow I made a much more laggier farm. But this is a much better lag because at least we're getting some results. The previous lag was just giving us garbage. Ars Nouveau and magical mods in general are great as long as you're not going industrial. And well, we kind of need to go industrial, we need a lot of insanium. In order to make this fully automatic, we just need to have a timer. And we set you to, I don't know, 15 seconds, so 300 ticks? Yeah, 300 ticks is too fast. They don't have time to grow. So maybe we do 400 ticks. That's 20 seconds. I have went up ahead and finished the farm and yes, it's a teeny tiny bit laggy, but as long as we're looking at it. If we're over there, we should be fine. I did mention that the farm is finished, well, I meant just planting the crops. We're still missing a lot of lily pads of fertility and they're actually much more efficient than ours Nouveau because you might notice that these ones are growing. Maybe. Yeah, the four rows on the right are growing much faster because they are affected by lily pads of fertility and these guys are growing a bit slower. But I did notice that lily pads of fertility have a huge range because they're bone milling here. So I don't know, maybe later on I can sneak a few under the braziers as well. The issue is that I need a few slime pearls and well, we're out of them. Once I get the additional lily pads of fertility, this should be a decent farm and well, hopefully we are also going to get our first block of insanium. But for the moment, I think we are done here. Oh, and by the way, in other news, I was checking our quarry and it seems that it has made decent progress. And I have made another mob farm. <laughs> okay. I know that it's a teeny tiny bit dark, but this is good progress. And you should remember that we have two of them. I just killed a bat. You know, I was just thinking the entire reason that I divided this guy by two was because I thought create cannot handle more than like 10 blocks. And then suddenly I remembered the problem was with the lily pad of fertility. Create was doing fine. Anyways, just before we wrap up today's episode, there is one more thing that we need to do. First off, this stupid quarry that we have over here never works. We do have a chunk loading issue and I don't really know what to do. You see, I have a chunk loader barge, the quantum entangler porter had an anchor upgrade, and if you look at FTB utilities, this has been chunk loaded for the past week. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the end and try to obtain unobtainium. The quantum armor gives me an elytra and that's not really what I want. Stop digging. I don't think it really matters. This should be fine. And since in order to make the dimensional seed, we need a crazy amount of end stone, let us not void it. Oh, we're also getting garbage. Oh, no, 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 no. Stop. You go to hell and you start working. I'm also not sure. Is it going to mine on Optanium? Yeah, we want to convert this guy into a clearing quarry so that just in case nothing is left. Yeah, now we're mining the dirt. Okay. Nether ore. In the end... Okay, so I was digging right over there, you can literally see it, and then I noticed that is end midlands. So I just went to the journey map and it seems this is an end highland, and well, I'm now digging this place. I have no idea if it's going to harvest on Optanium or not, but well, this is a waiting game. We have to wait for it to finish. For a second I thought we have imaginary time blocks. Anyhow, what I was trying to say was that this is a waiting game, so I'll be AFK here for a few hours. And we shall see the results next episode, because it is time to wrap up this one. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, bye bye.